Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and uh, today we're going to go over some of the features that Todd and Russell announced that are going to be in ClickFunnels 2.0 as it gets released to the beta testers over the next couple of months and then into next year when it's going to be released to the general public. And what I have here, what you're seeing on the screen right now, is what they're calling your workspace. And in here is where you're going to find everything you're going to be working on like here you got your blog and then here you have products I'll just go through a bunch of these here you can see what they are you got collections and discounts and things like that and then here we got all your orders and subscriptions and I'll tell you one cool thing here about the products is I help beta test this for them is that once you create a product you create it one time you can use it across everything on all of your different funnels. So that's going to be one thing that's going to be super cool. Plus you can also put it into what they're calling the customer something or another. I got a slide here in a minute. Um, I'll think of it then. But you can actually have it in there so they can go in, they can see what products they purchased, and then if they see something they haven't already purchased, they can click on it and one click upsell and they can buy it. So it's pretty cool. We got all of our contacts here, analytics, marketing and then here pipelines and settings down here at the bottom so let's uh, take a look at a couple of slides and the first one here is something Todd was talking about in Russell 2 about the funnel hacker life cycle. And they're talking about when you first come in here, mainly what you're doing is you're do, building some opt-in pages because you want to collect some leads. Then you start wanting to make a few sales and then you're doing upsells and downsells and stuff like that. Then you want to get into subscriptions, membership sites, courses, things like that. Email marketing, of course, you want to implement it. And then, then people start going, okay, well, I want this to be more like a website, not just a funnel. I want it to be more like a website. So I want to have myself a a homepage. I want to be able to set myself up a store with all kinds of different products inside of it. I want to be able to have a blog so I can create content and be able to have backlinks and SEO and be able to be found in the search engines. And then of course, once I get bigger and bigger and we're growing our company here, we want to be able to have our sales team. We want to be able to have people come in and work on our sites. We want to have designers be able to come in. We want analytics people to be able to come in. And we want to be able to segment them so that your, your funnel builder doesn't get to see your sales numbers. And the person who's looking at your sales numbers never goes in and starts messing around with the funnels. So we'll talk about that actually in a different video. That's not for today. And then, of course, you need to know your numbers. You need to know your analytics. So all of these things right here are being put into ClickFunnels to Point oh, and I don't think I mentioned it in this video, but so 2.0 is a completely new platform. So you had ClickFunnels 1.0 over here, which was built on Ruby on Rails, and you got 2.0, totally separate platform built on React.js or React JavaScript library. And the reason why they had to go to the other platform is because eventually their goal, their plan is to build this thing to over a million users. Right now they have over 100,000. They want to 10x that and the only way they could do it was to go onto a new platform that would be able to allow them to scale to be able to grow to that size. So let's jump in here. One of the very first things they're going to teach us beta testers, which I I'm, I'm part of the group of beta testers because I went to Funnel Hacking Live. And over the next three months, October, November, December 2021, they're going to start rolling stuff out to us. And one of the very first things they're going to start rolling out to us is the ability to build our home pages, our funnel hubs, our blogs, pages, stuff like that. So the very first thing they're going to roll out to us beta testers is what they're calling a funnel hub. Now in the past, what they did is they were building their funnel hubs on WordPress. And you can see this right here. This is a WordPress site that Russell has where he then has links to all of his books, his podcasts, 
um, blog posts, of course, and things like that. And so they're going to show us how to build our funnel hubs inside of the ClickFunnels editor. So as you can imagine, if they're rebuilding the entire thing, they're completely rebuilding the editor as well. And so you're going to be able to use the ClickFunnels editor to build your front pages, your home pages, whatever you want to call them. You're also going to have them to be able to build separate pages that you could use. Now, I mean, again, here, think in terms of a WordPress blog. So you had like your, your home page, you had other pages, and then you had your blog posts. Now, what does make, what makes a blog post different in WordPress? There's only one thing. We, the only difference between a post and a page is that the posts are included in what they call the WP loop, which means they will always show the most recent blog posts that you create, unless, of course, you set it otherwise and you make one sticky to the top, essentially. Otherwise, besides that, there's no difference between a post and a page. So in here, we're going to now be able to build out, and you can see over here on the left-hand side, is we can build out pages, but we can also build out blogs. So your website, your blogs, your homepage, everything right there, and then also the customer center, which they didn't go into a lot of detail on that as far as images go. So I'm going to leave that one to the side for right now and continue uh, with our funnel hub. And right here, what they're showing is inside of your website, inside of your pages, we are in the editor. You can tell up here at the top, you got your tabs up here for your settings and your elements, your pop-ups and stuff like that. So we are right here inside of the editor and you can set up different pages, different theme pages. So you can set up your home page with a certain layout, certain colors, whatever you would like. And then you can use that theme across all all of your different stuff. You can do it across blog pages and blog posts, but you can also do it across funnel pages as well. So it's going to be universal. And that's one of the things that they created here was the ability to create universal sections. At least I know their sections could be universal rows and elements as well. I'm not really sure, but you can definitely create universal sections that you can use across everything. And so therefore you can have a theme that can run through all your stuff and you only have to create it once you don't have to create it a million times so it also says here you can create themes for your storefront your different carts your different collections a uh, theme for your blog your blog posts and the customer center your memberships your 404 pages and any of your other pages you can set up a very specific theme for and then run it across all of the pages inside of your site and here's what one of those universal sections would look like. So as you know, the regular sections on the page are going to be green and your rows are going to be blue. Well, in this case here, they made the universal section purple and they also put the word universal in there. So it's going to be really easy to figure out which ones are your universal sections as you're going through and you're building your pages. And again, here pages are going to be pretty self-explanatory. They're just like anything else, but they're not necessarily going to be in the flow of a funnel. They're going to be a separate page that you might send somebody to for whatever reason. Uh, you can use them for anything. And again, on the pages here, you can pull in a template. So you can create a template uh, that looks like whatever it looks like, and then you can pull it in and you can use it on a sales page. You can use that template on a on an order form page, on an OTO page, on a member membership page, whereas under uh, ClickFunnels 1.0, you had to make sure that you built everything specifically in the page type that you needed. Here, you can essentially build a page and then pull it into the type. Instead of having to choose the type first and then build the page, here you can build the page and then pull it into the type. So it's going to make it a lot easier to be able to, again, build it real fast and then be able to spread it out across all your pages, posts, funnels, etc. So on your blog, it's going to act exactly like a WordPress blog. I shouldn't say exactly like. It's going to act very similar to a WordPress blog where you can see here your whole your list of your blog posts. You can, of course, click on them, go in and edit them. You can set them to public or draft or even members only. So somebody actually has to have a specific password to be able to get in and see that uh, blog content. If anyone's ever used Wishlist Member 10, 15 years, 
years ago, I don't remember how long it was, they had this feature, and I always thought that was so great that you could segment blog posts even as to whether somebody had access to them or not. And then inside of each one of the individual posts, you're going to see this again. It's going to look very familiar to you. It's going to definitely look like WordPress. And so you just got your basic WYSIWYG editor here. You can drop in videos, images. It looks like you can even do sound files. And then, of course, you can click on this little button here, and it will give you the ability to see the internal code. So if you're a coder like I am, you can go in there. You can change out the CSS, the HTML structure things like that. But what I'm also thinking you should be able to do is that when, uh, so you, let's say we got this blog post and we say, okay, after the third paragraph in the blog post, we want to insert something. We want to insert maybe a, um, an opt-in form. Let's say we're going to put an opt-in form after the third paragraph. Well, I'm pretty sure, and I haven't tested this yet because I haven't had a chance to get inside the editor. I will probably within a couple of weeks. But the ability to be able to then take that and inject it directly inside of the blog post. So that's definitely one of the things I'm going to work on. And again, we got our visibility just like a blog would have. We're going to have our public, our draft, or our members only. Put in your author, you can put in your category, you can put in your tags. So again, here, what are we looking at? We got all this text on the screen, we got categories, we got tags. So we're going to be able to silo, segment things, which is all good for SEO. You got your featured image down here at the bottom, and then I can't see the rest of the page. So I'm guessing that down below there, we're going to have other settings you can put in there for your SEO metadata and things like that specific to every single individual post. And then, of course, as um, I've, I've pointed out in other videos in the past, one of the biggest things is the internal linking. Because when they built Google, it was all about the page rank, and it still really is. They've applied a million different filters, Penguin, Panda, everything else on top of the original algorithm, but the original algorithm still stands, and it ha has to do with links of good quality going to your individual pages. So inside of here, it'll be interesting to see what kind of a mechanism that they have for being able to create internal linking just like you would inside of a blog. So again, haven't had access to that yet. So as soon as I see that, as soon as I know something about that, I will be shooting more videos to show you exactly how it is. And I don't think I mentioned it yet. Just keep your eyes out. Go to my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be putting out hundreds, and that's probably not an exaggeration. I think I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I have 600 uh, ClickFunnels videos already posted for 1.0. Now we're on 2.0, so there's going to be plenty more to come. So the question everybody has is when does ClickFunnels 2.0 go live? So how it's working right now is it's, um, it is now September of 2021. Funnel Hacking Live just ended. And so October, November, December of 2021 is when they're going to have the private beta testers, the people who attended Funnel Hacking Live. Uh, we're going to be going in there. And they're going to be slowly dripping out different things to us. They're going to start off with doing the funnel hubs and stuff, then membership areas, then e-commerce. And then come next January 2022, that's when they're going to start rolling it out to more beta testers. I'm guessing there's going to be another 20, 30,000 people brought in at that point. And then it's going to go live to the general public sometime in March or possibly later, depending on how their schedule works out over time as far as rolling out the products. And who knows, we might go in there on day one and break it so badly. Uh, everything could get delayed as well. Who knows? But that's really all I have. I just wanted to go through here show you some of the stuff, show you the blogging capability, the ability to create pages and funnel hubs and create SEO inside of ClickFunnels. So if you got any questions, just let me know.